just get back. 20 minutes after lifeguards gave final warnings and left the beach. Guys, watch out! Three young Chinese men went swimming in Backpackers Reef. It's after pack-up time, and a swimmer has been missing for over an hour. Looking for a man named Mamet. Then lifeguards spot commotion 150 metres from shore. Hey, is that someone out the back waving? There's a guy going under out the back of the flag. So go, 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 go. A swimmer goes to the man's aid, only for the tables to quickly turn. Oh, he's dragging another person under. Lifeguards are still a long way off. Hey guys, I've got a board on my car. In moments, there could be two drowned swimmers. I got a call from the tower that there's two guys going under where the flags were, which was right in front of me. And I just pinned it. We just scramble to grab whatever we can. We grabbed a few boards. Me and Singlet's both ran down. You know, I'm I've got it. it. I couldn't see person. All I heard was going under and drowning. Yeah, I put my head down and just got out there as quick as I could. Have you got eyes on that? How bad is it? We've got him on the binoculars. The bike needs help. Yatesy is backed up quickly by Maxi. I just wanted to go as fast as I can, and at one stage it felt like it was forever to get to the guy. It was like a police system, they were both going up and down, up and down. And then in that case, it's a perfect example. Sometimes the rescuers do get in trouble as well. When I got there, they were pretty much holding each other up. I looked over and uh, Maxi was coming out, which is good to see. The rescuer was swimming with his girlfriend when he saw the drowning victim in trouble. He has, without doubt, saved a life. The guy that swam over to him, you know, is a hero because he kind of gave us a bit of time to get there so he didn't sink. Not looking for accolades, the mystery man swims back to shore. You know, he put his own life in danger to help this guy and that's probably one of the most selfless things you could do as a human being. AJ is visiting Bondi for the first time. Mammoth, the missing man, is still nowhere to be seen. Lucky that we were still here waiting, looking hey, for that other guy. guy. Mate, he's a legend. Um... We weren't still here. That guy would have been dead. Yeah. Up at the tower, Chapo thinks he's solved the mystery of Mammoth. Oi, the, the, the bald guy with the grey shorts is back at his tower. Oh, thank you. We haven't even used on that. <laughs> <laughs> he's back. He's, the, he's back. He's living in mate. Okay. In the end, Mamet wasn't missing. He'd just gone for a walk. But ironically, the false alarm he sparked is what kept lifeguards back late and saved another man from drowning. You know, things like that really play on your mind and you really sort of start to reflect on them and think, you know, everything kind of happens for a reason down here sometimes. At the end of the day, we, we saved this guy's life. We also found Mamet. There's a good ending. It's good. A couple struggle 100 metres out. Popo and Reedy paddle out in near darkness. Reedy picks off one swimmer. Popo rescues two more. The couple had been given numerous warnings by lifeguards earlier that afternoon. Like the, the sand just went down. So we just kept going. Like... Um, we're gonna be the stubborn people that's gonna die, and we almost did. Yeah. That was scary. I'm listen never gonna... to the life, guys. Listen to the life. Guys. Yeah, seriously, listen to the life. Guys. It's probably lucky that Reedy and I said we'll go and have a beer because if we weren't having a beer, we went home. There'd be no one there for them. They would have drowned for sure. Hoppo and Reedy finally go home. But at 9:30 p.m., a call from police. Lifeguards are back on duty. I had the biggest day ever, and I just got home and had some dinner, and I got a call as a chopper down here searching for a missing person. A drunken swimmer's gone in, and uh, he's never come out. They both went in. Yeah. They both went in and one come out. Been on the drink all day, and all from last night and all day. Come down for a swim, and uh, yeah, never come out of the water. So I'm pretty upset, you know, we were here to quarter past eight tonight. We did loads of rescues, it was getting dark, and we warned people over and over. They've had a look at um, the shore. They've also had a look at uh, the cliff face. At 10pm, the search is postponed. OK, 
guess will sort of take us as it goes in the morning. If he's still missing, then it's more of a body recovery, which will be um, not nice at all. It's an absolute tragedy if something has occurred here, but weighing up all the options, they told me he was a pretty, he was a good swimmer. Yeah, sure, he'd had a gut full of piss, but I reckon he's somewhere else. It's a horrible way to start the year. Next morning, Dino gets a phone call about the missing swimmer. How did it happen? Yeah, mate, I guess it's the best result. It is frustrating, but uh, happy not to be looking for a body this morning. I'll, I'll pass it on to you, John. He's all right, boys. He was drunk and irresponsible, and he's turned up at his mum's house. It's really, I don't know how to take it. I guess I'm glad he's not dead. You know, it says it all's a hot day. The 1st of January, they got blind, they've gone for a swim and missed each other. Well, he left his clothes on the beach. I guess you would, you know, he's gone missing and yeah. just disappeared. Did he walk home through Bondi on New Year's Day in the nude <laughs> and not even know about it? The fate of these two girls weighs on Jethro's shoulders. I could see that they were youngish girls and the fear was in their eyes. They were screaming for help when I was paddling out. So I, you just got to go. You got to go hard. They might not make it. When you're rescuing young kids, time's not on your side. You really don't know how long, how long they got left in them to fight. Jethro learns why the girls couldn't hear earlier warnings from lifeguards. Because they're deaf. They looked at each other in a weird way as if like to acknowledge what was going on and they worked together as a team and yeah, never seen anything like it. Young girls are sisters. On shore, Harrison looks for their parents. If I could hear the screams 50 metres away on the beach, surely the parents could hear the screams. It's the grandmother. She's dead. The grandmother has been trying to signal the girls for the last 10 minutes. She was on the water's edge helpless. She couldn't let anyone know that her kids are in trouble. She couldn't run up to us, you know. She just started doing sign language to me and I felt my heart sunk a bit, actually. We didn't know we was moving back and, yeah. Um, me and Samantha thought it's going to be fun way back, but we were drowned because water splashed over my face. I told Savannah, why say help? When you're out in the water, you hear, you know, the seagulls, the crashing of the waves. They couldn't hear anything. Not being able to hear anything or knowing that the lifeguard's coming to get you, that's... It'd be your worst nightmare. I learned from school about rip, and I thought it might be rip, so I do follow what teacher taught us. Say help, yeah. Down here we see people from so many different walks of life and it definitely makes you reflect and, and realise how good our job is down here at the beach. When you rescue two girls like that, yeah, it feels really good to send them home. Twenty minutes after lifeguards gave final warnings and left the beach... Guys, watch out! Three young Chinese men went swimming in Backpackers Reef. People take that risk and I wish they wouldn't do that. The men were rescued by members of the public, but one man remains unconscious. He's not breathing and doesn't have a pulse. Just get back. Off-duty lifeguards saw the commotion. Mate, I was just after work swimming at Bronnie and just seeing the helicopter flying out Bondi, so I raced over and, um, and sure enough, there was a resuscitation in progress in the south corner. Even if I was off-duty, I still help people. It's one life, there is no price for that. Paramedics resuscitate the man using a defibrillator. I 
got to look at him as they're walking up the, the beach and he wasn't looking real good at that stage. He has a pulse and is breathing, but remains unconscious. It's unclear how long he was underwater. We put such a big effort in for those 13 hours of the day to make sure everyone goes home safe. And when you hear of something happening after hours, it, uh, it can be devastating. A day later, and the man remains in hospital in a coma. Head lifeguard Hoppo believes inexperience led to the tragedy. On pack up that night, there was only one small uh, rip down south where Mario had did the rescue during the day. The rest of the beach was quite calm and flat. So what I think happened was the three walked into uh, where that small rip was and then eventually couldn't stand up and started panicking. 